Hello everyone and welcome to Ocean Cadence. Today in this video we will be undertaking the topic of bumping clearance for an air compressor, its significance and its measurement. So let us start. First of all we would have to understand before the measurement of the bumping clearance as to what is the significance of having this clearance the increase or decrease in this clearance. So let us see now. The bumping clearance first of all is defined as the clearance volume that is left between the piston when the piston is at TDC and the cylinder head. As you can see in this figure, this is when the piston is at its topmost point that is the TDC point after the completion of the stroke and this is the cylinder head lower end between this there will be an empty volume this is known as the clearance volume which we have indicated in this diagram and this clearance of this volume particular volume is known as the bumping clearance that is bumping clearance is the mechanical allowance that is being given above the top of the piston so that the piston does not go and physically hit or damage the cylinder head or any other significant, part of, significant parts of the head such as the walls and all. That is why the term bumping is used in bumping clearance. Now since we know what bumping clearance signifies, we have to understand what happens if the bumping clearance of a compressor cylinder is altered. Before that we have to familiarize ourselves with a particular term called volumetric efficiency because this is where the bumping clearance comes into play. Volumetric efficiency of a compressor cylinder or compressor uh, unit is defined as the ratio of actual air taken in to the theoretical volume of the stroke or it can also be defined as the ratio of stroke volume that is Vs when the piston moves from TDC to BDC Vs and the ratio of sum of Vs plus Vc that is the clearance volume that is volumetric efficiency is equals to Vs stroke volume upon Vc clearance volume plus Vs stroke volume. So now that we know that the volumetric efficiency is dependent on clearance volume in an inverse relationship. It means that the more we increase the clearance volume, the lower will be the volumetric efficiency, which means that the actual amount of air which would be drawn into the cylinder would be less and would be less effective as compared to the theoretical amount that should have been drawn. So, more number of cycles as well as more redrawing of air of the same cycle would happen lowering the volumetric efficiency. Now to keep the volumetric efficiency at an optimum level what we do is to keep the clearance volume that is the bumping clearance as tight as possible so that first of all there is no damage no adverse effect to the compressor to the cylinder head or any part and also the volumetric efficiency is not affected. How this is done that is how the bumping clearance is adjusted is something I would explain uh, later on. Before adjusting we have to first learn how to measure this bumping clearance. A very simple methodology has been adopted by almost all the compressor manufacturers. What happens is that after removing the top of the cylinder head that is the top part the cylinder head part and this part is removed by simply unlocking the torque tightened bolts, removing the bolts one by one and if we consider a let us say a tandem air compressor or even a single uh, air compressor inline air compressor by removing the uh, intake wall then removing the cylinder head with the help of eye bolts and then once the inside cylinder is exposed we take a custom lead wire ball. Now by measuring the height of this lead wire ball, we initially know the dia of the lead wire ball. So by measuring the dia, we know what is the uh, measurement 
and after that we put this ball inside into the cylinder and place it on top of the piston again we put the cylinder head back put the top uh, put the top tightened bolts back put the valve back and assemble it in the reverse order and we have to make sure that the cylinder head is top tightened with the help of a torque spanner while this removal and put back process we have to make sure that the gasket that is in use is the same the gasket is not changed so as to know the original condition of the pumping clearance the significance of it i will explain later so putting the lead wire ball in now we are ready to measure as you can see we have the flywheel that is connected to the shaft so by putting a mechanical bar we have to put into this uh, flywheel as we know there are peripheral holes into the flywheel and simply turn it mechanically through the turning bar once we turn it with the turning bar then this piston will go up there comes a point when the lead wire ball is crushed and we have to make sure that it is it is being done until the stroke is reversed and the mechanical resistance is felt on your hand at the point when the lead wire ball is compressed after that once as soon as the stroke is reversed after the resistance is felt on the hand we, we can stop the process again after that the same same disassembly part where we have to remove the cylinder head and everything else and then what we do is we take out the lead wire ball once we take out the lead wire ball there would obviously be because of the compression that has occurred inside there would obviously be a change in the diameter now if i have the original diameter d1 and the change diameter d2 we can simply subtract it and find the bumping clearance of the compressor in that particular cylinder unit so once we have found out the bumping clearance now what is the significance of it as we can see and we, uh, we had discussed before that by changing the bumping clearance we are playing with the bumping clearance so we are changing the volumetric efficiency accordingly now we don't want our bumping clearance to go beyond a certain limit so how can it be changed the most basic method of changing the bumping clearance is by changing the thickness of the gasket that is between the cylinder head and the cylinder body so the intermediate gasket that is being put to seal the surface metal to metal con instead of having a metal to metal contact that gasket varies in thickness for the same maker for the same compressor you will get gasket of different thicknesses or maybe multiple gaskets can be used so by changing the gasket thickness or by using multiple gaskets the bumping clearance will get changed so depending upon the age of the compressor and depending upon the compression requirements and the performance of the compressor we decide the thickness of the gasket or the number of gaskets that have to be put if that value goes beyond a certain limit the bumping clearance will change then it inadvertently changing the clearance volume and therefore the volumetric efficiency also at the lower end at the corn rod end where the corn rod connects to the crank pin side what happens is that at the foot we can put shims and then tighten the corn rod bolts at the bottom end by the help of a torque spanner so the addition of this shim will automatically raise the height of the piston and therefore make the piston move more towards the top and therefore altering the bumping clearance while doing any of these adjustments it has to be made sure that the manufacturer's recommendation for bumping clearance is strictly followed so as to avoid any kind of chances that can lead to mechanical breakage or any other unfortunate occurrence within the cylinder and also making sure that the clearance is not left so much significantly high that it alters the efficiency of the compressor in a negative way i hope that this process of measurement of bumping clearance its significance and what it actually means and how it plays a role important role in the functioning of the compressor is clear to everyone i would like to request you all to please share your comments and also subscribe to our channel and 
make sure to follow our content and encourage us for keeping for in order to keep making such videos in the future thank you